Where are you? Batman Begins is a 2005 superhero film directed by Christopher Nolan and written by Nolan and David S. Goyer. It is based on the DC comic books character Batman and it stars Christian Bale as Bruce Wayne Batman with Michael Caine, Liam Neeson, Katie Holmes, Gary Oldman, Cillian Murphy, Tom Wilkinson, Ken Watanabe and Morgan Freeman in supporting roles. The film reboots the Batman film series telling the origin story of Bruce Wayne from the death of his parents to his journey to become Batman and his fight to stop Ra's al Ghul and the Scarecrow from plunging Gotham City into chaos. Nolan and Goya began developing on the film in early 2003, aiming for a darker, more realistic tone compared to the previous films. A primary goal for their vision was to engage the audience's emotional investment into both Batman and Bruce Wayne's identities as the lead character. The film, which was principally shot in the United Kingdom, Iceland and Chicago, relied heavily on traditional stunts and miniature effects, with computer-generated imagery being used in minimal capacity compared to other action films. Comic book storylines such as The Man Who Falls, Batman Year One and The Batman Long Halloween served as inspiration. Batman launched in mid-2005 and went on to gross $371.9 million, becoming the ninth highest grossing movie of 2005. Now, as a movie, this is exactly what I was waiting for. As a Batman fan, I couldn't have been happier. The movie treated the character with the utmost respect. It treated the character like the way Batman should be treated. It was dark, it was serious, it was realistic. And it really delved into the heart with finesse and poise and really captured the true essence of the Batman character. Now, the casting of Christian Bale as Bruce Wayne was a superb choice. Christian is a method actor, an intense actor, who has played a variety of roles from Patrick Bateman, the psychopathic killer in the American Psycho, to the emotionless cleric John Preston in Equilibrium. Christian Bale brought a seriousness to the role that hadn't been seen before. He brought a status to the role, a real dramatic actor playing a real dramatic role. Now Bale was confirmed on September 11th of 2003, having expressed interest in the role since Darren Aronofsky was planning to film his own adaptation of Batman. Henry Cavell, Billy Kudrup, Hugh Dancy, Jack Ginnenhall, Joshua Jackson, Heath Ledger, of course, who would go on to play the Joker in Dark Knight, and Cillian Murphy, who plays Dr. Jonathan Crane's Scarecrow in this movie, all took interest in the role. Josh Hartnett even met with Nolan about the role, but decided not to pursue it. Amy Adams served as the casting reader for the casting of Bruce Wayne in favor of a casting director. Bale himself felt the previous films had underused Batman's character and overplayed the villains instead. To best pose as Batman, Bale studied graphic novels and the illustrations of the superhero. Director Nolan said of Bale, he has exactly the balance of darkness and light that we are looking for here. Goya stated that while some actors could play a great Bruce Wayne or a great Batman, Bale could portray both radically different personalities perfectly. Since Bale had lost a great deal of weight in preparation for his role in The Machinist, Bale hired a personal trainer to help him gain 100 pounds or 45 kgs of muscle in the span of only a couple of months to help him physically prepare for the role. After realizing he went over by 30 pounds or 14 kgs, he lost the excess weight by the time for me began. Bale trained in Wung Chung Kung Fu under Eric Oram in preparation for the movie. Now obviously this movie deals with Batman's backstory, something the other movies had only barely touched on. In fact, it's such a backstory, you have to wait an hour and two minutes before you see the first appearance of Batman in his suit. I'm Batman. Bruce Wayne is a billionaire socialite who, after witnessing his parents' death in a mugging at the age of eight, travels around the world for seven years before returning home to inherit his family's company, Wayne Enterprises, whilst operating at night as a bat-masked vigilante, bringing justice upon the criminal underworld of Gotham City. And I just love this part of the movie, the way you see a young Bruce Wayne confused, lost, wanting to kill the man that killed his parents, being beaten up even stealing to survive, until he comes across the League of Shadows, a cult-like terrorist organization that helps him find his way, helps him learn the art of deception, how to fight, how to survive, but most importantly, how to create fear with a symbol. And that's what Batman is. It's not just a man running around in a big suit. It's a symbol. It's a symbol of fear, to put fear into those that will do harm upon others. Now, comic book writer and author Dan Fingerroth argues that the strong theme in the film is about Bruce's search for a father figure, saying Alfred is a good father that Bruce comes to depend on, but Bruce's real father died before they could establish an adult relationship, and Liam Neeson's Ducard is stern and demanding, but not a father figure with any sympathy. If Bruce is anyone's son, he's Alfred's. 
Morgan Freeman's Lucius Fox is cool and impermeable, another steady anchor in Bruce's life. Fingeroth also argues that the major theme in the film is fear, which supports the story of Bruce Wayne becoming a hero. Director for Christopher Nolan stated that the idea behind the film was a person who would confront his innermost fear and then attempt to become it. Fingeroth referred to this film's depiction as a man with fear, but who rises above it. The theme of fear is further personified by the scarecrow. The film depicts how fear can affect all creatures regardless of might. Allusions to fear are seen throughout, from Bruce conquering all of his demons to becoming Batman, to the scarecrow and his deadly fear toxin. The macabre, distorted images presented in Scarecrow's toxin induce hallucinations, also express the idea of terror to an extreme. Now, Batman Begins has been cited as one of the most influential movies of the 2000s. On the film's 10th anniversary, Forbes published an article describing its latest influence. The word reboot became part of our modern vocabulary. Superhero origin stories became increasingly in vogue for the genre. The phase dark and gritty likewise joined the cinematic lexicon, influencing other perceptions of different approaches to storytelling, not only in the comic book film genre, but in all other sorts of genre as well. Even the James Bond series can credit Batman Begins with the reboot of Casino Royale in 2006. Even Kevin Feige, producer and president of Marvel Studios, stated, Christopher Nolan's Batman is the greatest thing that's happened to superhero movies because it bolstered everything. Now, of course, Christian Bale was a fantastic casting, but the rest of the cast matched him equally. The casting of Gary Oldman as James Gordon, one of the few uncorrupted Gotham City police officers who was on duty on the night of the murder of Bruce's parents, and in this way shares a special bond with the adult Bruce, and thus with Batman. Oldman was Nolan's first choice for Ra's al Ghul, but when Chris Cooper turned down the part of Gordon to spend time with his family, Nolan decided that it would be refreshing for Oldman, who is now renowned for his portrayal of villains, to play a hero instead. Then, of course, we had the casting of Liam Neeson as Henry Ducard and later Ra's al Ghul, the leader of the League of Shadows, an ancient society that uses chaos to punish the corrupt and decadent, who goes undercover as an associate of the League and trains Bruce in martial arts, later revealing himself in the film's climax. Writer David Goya said he felt this was the most complex of all the Batman villains, comparing him to Osama bin Laden. He's not crazy in the way that all the other Batman villains are. He's not hell-bent on revenge. He's actually trying to heal the world. He's just doing it in very draconian means. The casting of Neeson was pure brilliance. Neeson is commonly cast as a mentor, and usually as a hero in most movies, so the revelation that his character was the main villain was intended to shock viewers. Then of course we have the brilliant casting of Cillian Murphy as Dr. Jonathan Crane, Scarecrow, a corrupt psychopharmacologist working as a chief administrator at Arkham Asylum, a specialist in psychology of fear, he has secretly created a fear-inducing toxin and plots with Ra's al Ghul to expose the entire Gotham population. Nolan decided against casting Murphy for Batman before casting him as Scarecrow. Murphy read numerous comics featuring Scarecrow and discussed making the character look less theatrical with Nolan. Murphy explained, I wanted to avoid the worms or gumbage look because he's not a very physically imposing man. He's more interested in manipulation of the mind and what that can do. Then of course there's Michael Caine as Alfred Pennyworth. I was somewhat perplexed by this choice at first. I just didn't know if Michael Caine would fit the role perfectly. But how wrong was I? A trusted butler to Bruce's parents who continues his loyal service to their son after their deaths is the closest confidant to young Bruce Wayne. Nolan offered the role originally to Anthony Hopkins, who declined. Nolan then went to Caine's country home to personally deliver him the script, telling him what the role was and describing Alfred as Batman's godfather. Nolan felt Kane would effectively portray the foster father element of the character. Although Alfred is depicted in the film as having served the Wayne family for generations, Kane created his own backstory in that before becoming Wayne's butler, Alfred had served in special air service. After being wounded, he was invited to the position of the Wayne family butler by Thomas Wayne because he wanted a butler, but someone a bit tougher than the average. My one gripe with the movie was the casting of Katie Holmes as Rachel Dawes. She, of course, plays Bruce's childhood friend and love interest and is also the assistant district attorney. I never felt the chemistry between Katie Holmes and Christian Bale was believable, and I found the recasting of Maggie Gyllenhaal for The Dark Knight a far superior move. Katie Holmes just didn't really belong in a movie of this gravitas. Now, even the choice of using a character like Carmen Falcone, a mafia boss within Gotham, who shares a prison cell with Joe Chill after he murders Bruce's parents, and later has Chill murdered after his decision to testify against their relationship. Now, Falcone has always been seen as one of the lesser villains within the Batman universe because he's real. He's a real crime boss. But the use of him in this film, and he's played superbly by Tom Wilkinson, was a great choice. 
and added to the realism of this new Gotham. Morgan Freeman is excellent as Lucius Fox and a perfect choice, by the way. And he brings a panache to the role. I remember in 2005 when they were about to launch this film, I literally counted down the days to the launch. When I saw the new Batmobile, or as it was now known, the Tumblr, I was giddy with excitement. And who can ever forget the reveal of the Joker card right at the end of the movie? An awe-inspiring moment. This was the movie I was waiting for, the proper backstory to Batman, and for the first time the proper acknowledgement of all the true Batman fans out there. Christopher Nolan treated the character with respect and he made the movie with love. It's a fantastic movie and one you can watch over and over again. Batman Begins gets a 9 out of 10.